Hi, I'm Cheryl Belson with Plano American Sewing Guild. I recently had the pleasure of interviewing Claire Cochran of Stitch Buzz. She's the designer, inventor, and producer of her specialty rulers and templates for the sewing community. She launched her business with her seam allowance curve ruler back in 2011 and has grown her business from that time till now with 16 rulers and four templates. I thoroughly enjoyed my visit with Claire and I think you will too. Thanks for joining. I'm excited to say welcome, Claire. I'm glad that you could join me today for this um, interview. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm really interested to hear more about how this business got started. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got the idea to do this. Well, I, I started sewing, I guess, um, I mean, I started sewing when I was 13-ish, but I came, I started visiting it fervently when I was 40. And um, I got where I really enjoyed the Berta Style magazine. And um, I kept looking online for ways to add the seam allowance quicker because I, I felt like that really stopped my progress was adding seam allowances. And I tried absolutely every way. And I said, they, there just needs to be a ruler. that. And so, so I started looking for rulers, you know, that were, that would do, and, they, and it just wasn't there. And, you know, and I guess I probably just looked around and tried different things on and off for about two years. And I ran into a friend who she put me in touch with somebody that could actually cut and print them for me. And, um, and I just, it kind of grew from there. Wow. You know, I think I would have made a cardboard template. I don't think I would have <laughs> such a bold. I tried that. <laughs> yeah, I so, tried a bunch of stuff. Well, I, I know I use my essay or, or the uh, seam allowance ruler. I use that all the time almost every project i use it and um as i was telling you earlier i even use it if i'm using uh, a different width because you've got those lines on the ruler that allow you to shift it and find like a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch or whatever even if you don't have those other size rulers so it's a great it, yeah exactly yeah i was when i got a sample back the very first one i, I was really taken back about how much I really use that ruler like through the entire sewing process. So yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> Mine too. So um, I'm curious also, was the kind of design work that you had to do to design these rulers and templates, is that something that you already had a background in or did you just have to learn everything from scratch? Well, it's been an evolution. When I first started, I used a company out in Wisconsin and, and they had the design work there for a fee. And um, as I grew, I thought I needed to start cutting my own rulers. And so I learned Adobe Illustrator, you know, because, you know, when you purchase a laser, you're just like, whoa, you got to learn that stuff pretty quick. And so, and since I learned how to do like the outside shapes and then I would, I would take them someplace else to be printed um since i already had the print files and um so i just i just kept learning you know i've got some good friends that you know have encouraged me to to learn i think almost the entire adobe suite in the process of doing this business so it's just it's just been part of it <laughs> wow well you know they say that learning new things is what keeps our minds healthy and, and <laughs> <laughs> i hope so i think sewing's really good for that too I think you're right. I definitely think that sewing is, it's like working puzzles constantly. And it really is. There's always something that kind of throws you that you have to like, you know, do a work around. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm curious since now you've told us that that's not something, that's not a world that you already were familiar with. How did it feel when you first stepped out to launch that first product? Uh, that was, it was scary. I know because, you know, it, it cost a fair amount of money, you know, to actually, because, you know, you can't really go in and say, I want just a few rulers because it'll be so expensive. Nobody would buy them from you. So you have to like buy, you know, a certain amount just, just to be able to say that, you know, there's shipping and, you know, all of the various little fees that go along with having a product. So yeah, it was, it was pretty concerning, but um, I had a lot of support at the time and um, I was, I was really pleased and kind of amazed at the sewing community in general. 
they, you know, there are people that I never even asked that would just put it up on their blog and, and um, talk about it over and over and over again. And um, so, I mean, in the very beginning, I probably didn't, I, I had no idea about marketing, but you know, most everything I would say that um, helps in my business has been word of mouth. So it's, it's been really good. I don't think anybody was really making anything for the sewing community when I, when I came in, not like specific rulers like they do in the quilting area. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You very much target the garment uh, sewing community um, yeah. with your, with all of your rulers and your templates and things. I'm pretty sure that when I bought my first ruler was actually at a conference and I believe that I bought it from Plano ASG because we had, uh, for a period of time, we were going to a couple of conferences like ETA or So Expo, and we sold some of those rulers um, that we got from you. I, I don't, right. really, I don't even know what the relationship was. I just know that's where I got my first ruler. <laughs> Y'all, yeah, a wholesale relationship. Yeah, I'll have some people that will go to those conferences and sell my rulers. So, no, it all worked out good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, all right. So you, you learned all these things and with great trepidation and anticipation, you launched your first product. When did you first get a sense that I think I really have hit on something here? You know, that's an interesting question because um, when I, I started off with a three eighths curve ruler, a seam allowance, because I made lots of knits and that's really what I wanted. And so I did it all for selfish reasons. I just, I said, you know, it really needs a straight edge on it. It used to not have a straight edge. And um, I got a sample back. This was back probably in 2012. And it just sat there and sat there. And I finally got it out and used it. And I was like, oh my God everybody needs this. I mean, if I love it this much, everybody needs it. If they're, if they're sewing what I'm sewing. But, um, so I think, I think that it was, it was fairly early on that I, I kind of had that feeling, but I think it was like once that five eighths ruler had that straight edge and, and I, I started using it, it just kind of like a light bulb went off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then somewhere along the way, I guess, because the light bulb went off, then your wheels started spinning into other ideas. Tell us about that branch when you said, okay, there's more to be done here. Well, like most sewers, I love to make things. And now I have lots of fun tools like Adobe Illustrator and got a laser in a friend's garage. And, and I'm able to actually print now with a UV printer. And uh, that makes like a really durable ink. You can't wash it off or anything. Um, I think actually credit cards are printed with UV ink. Uh, so, you know, I, I just, I just like making things and I, I come up with, um, you know, you know, just out of the process of sewing, I'll say, you know, it just really, it really would be so much easier if I just had a piece of plastic cut like that. Um, and, and that's kind of how the, the quick pocket came about. It was, you know, it just, it just made sense, you know, on a lot of, you know, smaller details. I mean, there's a lot of things I would like to do, but I, there are limitations like the the width and the the length that I can actually print on, and you know you got shipping that always says you know you need to do something a little smaller. So um, I don't know. I just I you know I just because of the tools that I have, I just kind of see I see stuff, and like you said, a lot of people will you know will reach out to me and they'll just tell me they'll say you ought to do this. Like somebody wants me to do a pattern grading ruler, but I'm a little bit worried about doing it because I've never done pattern grading. So I, it, it's just another research project and I usually send it back and forth to people that ask me so, so that I know that whenever the product is finalized that it really works for its intended purposes. Sure. Well, now you've made me curious. So with this laser printer, that you print do you print your rulers on demand or do you have stock that you pull from <laughs> i am so busy all the time um because it's just me i mean i i have people helping me with design work um so some of the design work i i do all my rulers but like the graphics and stuff i have help from um 
so yeah, I, I go every weekend and I cut out just as much as I can, you know, because I think it takes me about five or six hours just to sit and cut the plastic. Um, and then I come back and I just print them. So I usually have this, this is my workroom. I usually have probably about 20 of everything kind of in stock. Um, if I get a wholesale order, I usually say, you know, it's going to take me a week or two because, because of the process that I go through, but it kind of keeps, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a big inventory because I'm my own manufacturer. Well, it's, I, I found myself getting curious about that question because as you know, I, when doing research to do this interview, I got so intrigued with your templates that I ordered all three of them. And I'm very excited because I've already gotten them and I've got them up in my sewing room and I can't wait to try them. But as you were talking, I was like, well, so did she have to run over to her laser printer and print them off and then package them and send them to me? But I was probably out of that stack of roughly 20 that you keep on hand. Yeah, I guess I, I guess this, the short answer is I do things in batches when things get low. <laughs> right, right. That sounds... That makes a lot of sense. So, well, I've already confessed to you, speaking of your products, that I am um, curve ruler challenged. Oh. <laughs> so, I thought, well, maybe it would be um, interesting to people that are going to be listening to just get some tips straight from Claire on how to use the curve ruler appropriately. Oh, the curve runner. Yeah. My, I'll, I'll just, the Curve Runner came about with Kickstarter, but basically the, the Curve Runner, uh, and it's my absolute most popular ruler, but it, it's mostly for fitting. You have to like mark off the, seam, the stitching line, and I always do it with the, the SA Curve rulers, the seam allowance rulers, and then you would be measuring that and comparing what works best for you, and um obviously the arm size is a, is a big one. Um, I'm short, so I'm always changing my pattern, like making it shorter here and, and a forward sh shoulder adjustment. And so since I know kind of which measurement of my arm size that I like, I make sure that it ends up being that length and then whatever piece it adjoins, like the, the sleeve head, I, I gotta make sure that, you know, that that piece fits as well. So it's really, it's really a good quick way to make sure your pieces fit. And the key is that you, um, you watch the dot and it yes. rotates and you go, all right, that's one rotation, two rotations, etc., And that helps you keep up with the, the length that you're measuring. Right. I, I think that's why the, the 12 inch is so popular because one rotation is, you just say it's one foot, you know, it's being bigger. It's, it's, you have to be a little careful when you go around the corners, um, like going around like little tight turns is probably easier than easier with this one. Um, but every rotation is eight inches. So that's, you know, you have to kind of keep in, in mind that it's a little, not, a, not as simple of math as this one. Right, right. Well, I, I need to give it another chance. I, I have one and I've had one for some time and I just need to keep my eyeball on the dot. <laughs> keep that's your right. eyeball on the dot. That's right. That's right. So, um, so um, but I, I realized that one thing we haven't talked about yet is you haven't run us through your lineup. So what run us through your lineup of your products that you've got? Uh, what what all do I have? Okay, we start with the green rulers. All my seam allowance rulers, I have them in large and mini size, which I guess is about like this. Um, and I have five eighths. I have one and a half centimeters. I have half inch, and I have three eighths. So um, you know, like the five eighths rulers are great because they've got all those little lines. But sometimes, like if you are drafting something and it's only going to be in half inch, it's like way quicker just to get the half inch. But if you're only doing that occasionally, I would just stick with the five eights with all the lines. Um, obviously, the curve runners. I have the quick pockets, and they are to help you with 
welt, you know, making a welt pocket, you can make a double or a single. My instruction booklet is about 10 pages long. Took me forever to get that one done, uh, just because it's got a lot of graphics in it. Um, and, but it's really good for, to, for placing zipper pockets in and um, you could do a single welt. I don't have directions on a single welt, but that's pretty easy to find on online. Um, that's my newest product. I have a sleeve placket template, which is one of the ones that you bought, and um, that is obviously for making a sleeve placket, and it helps make them super accurate over and over and over again. Um, and it's for I a tower a placket, right? Huh? It's for a tower placket, right? Yes, it's for a tower placket, and one of the things... Yeah, one of the things that's really nice is if you have an embroidery machine and you want to do like a little embroidery or if you've got like a, a, I don't know, a plaid or something that you're trying to match, it's clear and you can put that tower exactly on, you know, before you cut out your placket, you know, so that everything comes out matchy matchy. <laughs> and, and then the, uh, the, what is it? The button fly guide is basically just for you know, making sure that the um, stitching line on a fly comes out just right. Uh, you can also use it, you know, to, to put the buttonholes in, you know, to, you know, with that, um, particularly on the waist. And let's see, what else do I have? I have a curvy. It is your standard fashion design ruler, but just the top half. So it's, it's super easy to take with you. And, and most of the time, that's the part that you're using. Um, so it's just a handy little French curve. And let's see, I'm just looking around to make sure I remember everything that I've got. Oh, well, I've got a stretch ruler. <clears throat> and it, yeah, and the stretch ruler, it has, um, obviously you can just take your knit fabric and find out how much stretch you need on it. But it's, it's thin and it's got like little holes every, every half inch. So it, it makes, you know, doing placket, you know, making, like a shirt placard or some other things, you know, kind of easy to. So I think that's it. Well, that's great. That's a, you've got quite the lineup. It's that's, that's a long way from, I just made my first ruler and I only have one thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. There's a lot of encouragement out there and I'm just like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I don't think I say no much. <laughs> well, so, um, down that same line of thinking, um, where do you see your next idea? Is there something new on the horizon? You mentioned something earlier that you had kind of your yeah. I, I had a tailor, um, a, bes a bespoke tailor reach out to me on Instagram and he said, you know what they really need right now in, in the sewing is a square, a sewing square. Um, and oddly enough, Another friend of mine, I guess about a year ago, came and showed me a nine, I mean a 1700 Taylor Square from I guess some French designer, and it was you know your your typical L, but it had some curves where at the bottom it was it had like a, a neckline curve and then like a hip curve and then almost like a lapel curve at the top and then the rest of it was you know and it was I guess it was about this big. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to do my own rendition of that one. Oh, that sounds, that sounds very interesting. I, I think that's one we're going to want to watch for. Yeah, <laughs> I'll let you know when it comes, when I finally get all the graphics done. That sounds great. Well, Claire, this has been a treat for me. I feel like I've learned lots of things about your business and about your, uh, how to use your curve runner. I'm going to give it another shot, and it's it's really been a treat to get to learn more about all of that. So yeah, I've enjoyed it too. Taking time for doing this interview with us, and um, we're going to keep our eye on you and look forward to more things from Claire Cochran. Sounds great. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Claire. Bye.